this class is entitled Call of Duty. All right. The reason why it's called, called Call of Duty is because we have to make sure that we're prepared for the call when we come into this truth. A lot of us come into this truth, we find ourselves sitting in purple chairs and never getting up doing the work. So this is an inspirational class, hopefully. Hopefully it cuts some people and makes them desire to get into the fight. Um, open up with Deuteronomy 32 and verse uh, 7. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 7. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and verse 7. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father and he will show thee. Thy elders and they will tell thee. So we're supposed to remember the days of old. The only way for us to remember the days of old is for us to go to this Bible. If we're not picking up the Bible, there's no way for us to remember the days of old. And then it says, consider the years of many generations. How do we consider those years of many generations? Get that in um, Joshua 1 and 8. Joshua 1 and 8. The book of Joshua, chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, Read. but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Stop. It says meditate. Considering is meditating. If you consider the days of old, that means you're meditating. You're meditating on what you have learned. You meditate on these laws. You're meditating on what the elders have given you to, to study. You're studying to show yourself approved. You're actually sitting there and you're fully considering what is required when you come into this walk. So read on. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. So do is an action word. Do means that you're going to actually commit yourself to an action in order to uh, bring forth the showing that you're doing the commandments. To make sure that you're showing that you actually are meditating on these laws. That you're digesting what is given to you. Read on. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. So if you want to be prosperous in this walk, if you want to be considered prosperous to the most high God, to Christ, you got to make sure that you're doing what you're meditating on. And if you're meditating on trash and on garbage, it's going to manifest itself. And it says that you may be have a be of good success. So we all want to be of good success. Why would you even sacrifice everything in your life? You you came up eating um pork chop, all that good stuff. Um, what else did they eat? Shrimp, crab, lobsters, being loose, all that good stuff. And it might seem like that stuff. I when I say all that good stuff, excuse me, all that bad stuff. Because you came up doing all that bad stuff. You sacrificed family, friends, so you can have good success in this walk. But you want to sit in a chair for X amount of years. For uh for five years, going on five years, you haven't put a brick in yet. You haven't desired to go out there and wake up your people. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 7. Read that again. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 7. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father and he will show thee. Thy elders and they will tell thee. So it says, ask thy fathers. Who are our fathers? This is, you got to remember, our worldly, fleshly fathers, they don't know nothing. They know nothing. It, this is talking about our spiritual fathers. All you have to do, you might say, hey, I might not have contact with, with uh, Bishop Nathaniel, with uh, Bishop Yawasop, with Bishop Kanai. You, you know what you could do? You don't have access to, to the deacons. But you know what you can do? All you have to do is turn on YouTube, type in what you're struggling with, and it pops up. I guarantee you IUIC has a class for everything that you're struggling with. From there, let's prove that our elders are our fathers. First Timothy. Get that. First Timothy's 5 and 1. First Timothy's 5 and 1. The book of First Timothy, chapter 5 and verse 1. Rebuke not an elder, uh -huh. but entreat him as a father. And the younger men as brethren. So there you go. We're supposed to entreat them as fathers. Those are our spiritual fathers. They're the ones who laid down the foundation for us to even be in what you call IUIC. A lot of us wouldn't have known the truth if it wasn't for our spiritual fathers. All right. And those fathers, don't get it twisted. They are leaders. From there, give me uh, 1 Thessalonians 2 and 11. 1 Thessalonians 2 and 11. Just to uh, lay them back off of that one. All right, so we got to make sure that we're taking heed 
to uh, what our fathers are telling us, how they're guiding us, because they are our leaders and they're the perfect example on how you answer the call of duty. Read that. First Thessalonians chapter two and verse 11. As ye know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children. There you go. As a father does his children. So you, you got to remember that these elders, they're our fathers. They're here to exhort us. And you know what? None of us have an excuse because if you're congregating, you have, you have elder brothers in the school as far as the captains, the officers, the soldiers who have more insight on this walk than you might have. You could go to them for guidance, but a lot of us, we neglect that. We decide to do our own thing. And let's find out what the scriptures say about doing your own thing. Get that in, um, what is it, First Maccabees 5 and 57? First Maccabees 5 and 57. Let's see what it says about y'all brothers that come into the truth. And y'all think y'all could go on the street, teach on your own, try to do your own thing. Bruh, you better fall in line because I'm telling you right now, hey, you better follow the order because God always sets up an order and he decides who he wants in that order. And our leaders have been chosen to lead us and, to, and set the foundation for the next group of men that come up to follow. Read that. First Maccabees chapter 5 and verse 57. Wherefore they said, let us also get us a name and go fight against the heathen that are round about us. So when they had given charge unto the garrison that was with them, they went toward Jamnia. Then came Georgius and his men out of the city to fight against them. Read. And so it was that Joseph and Azarias were put to flight. Wait, 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 wait. They were put to flight. See, these men received the order to stay put. They were leaders already, but they were, they were given the order, stay put. But you know what they were? They were self-willed. And what happened? They were put to flight. Read on. And pursued unto the borders of Judea. Read. And there were slain that day of the people of Israel about 2,000 men. Read. Thus were there, was there a great overthrow among the children of Israel, because they were not obedient unto Judas and his brethren. So they were not obedient to the commandment of the leaders. Our leaders set up something called MOV, Camp 101. You have to be obedient to the process to prove yourself that you are ready to be on the street, that you are ready to teach the nation. Because how you a novice trying to go to war? How can you be a novice and wake up your people? Listen, you have to follow the order. That's that going when you go in the military, you follow the chain of command. But why, when you come in here, you want to do your own thing? You think that it's okay to go out and and do your own thing? Because what you think you're better than the leaders? You think you're wiser? I tell you, no, 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 no. Read on. But fought to do some valiant act. Read. Moreover, these men came not of the seed of those by whose hand deliverance was given unto Israel. Howbeit, the man Judas and his brethren were greatly renowned in the sight of all Israel. So there you go. So these men, they caused other men to fall into harm's way. And in the same breath, they also weren't the ones chosen to go out there and put in the work. They weren't the ones chosen to lead the na nation to a victory. That You got to realize our elders are chosen men chosen to lead us to the victory. So from there, I want you to get me Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 1. Because let's, let's step into the actual calling that, that we're called to do. Read that. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 1. Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places. So she stands in the top of high places. These are your metropolitan cities. These are your places all around the world where you find our people at, where you find us scattered at, mainly here in Babylon. Read on. She standeth in the top of high places, by the way, in the places of the paths. The places of the path are the chief locations. This is where you find our people at. This is why you see IUIC on every corner doing 365, 30 days of camp. This is what we do because we are told this is, a, this is not for, for, for the faint hearted. This is for the men that actually believe in the mission set forth. Read on. She crieth at the gates. At the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. There you go. She's at every city, at the coming in at the, of the doors and the going out. You go to any city, 
you damn near guaranteed to find IUIC there. You find IUIC standing on the corners prophesying. We prophesy from sun up to sun down sometimes. The men go overseas and put in the work. We watch our elders do the same thing, and we have video footage to prove it. Y'all want to check the data? All right, from there, read on. At the coming in at the doors, unto you, O men, I call. Unto who? O men, I call. So the Lord is calling you men. He's telling you, I am calling you to get up and do the work. Read on. And my voice is to the sons of man. No, it's to the women. The sons of man. No, it's to the children. The sons of man. It's to you men. The sons of man. That's who God is calling. He's calling us to go out there and put in the work. All right, from there, give me um, John chapter 15 and verse 16. Just in case any of y'all came in here, thought y'all came in here on your own premise, that you came over in here on your own mind, but you didn't. Read that. John chapter 15 and verse 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. The commander said that we did not choose him, but he chose us. Read on. And ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Read that part again. Read, read the, uh, matter of fact, read it from the top again. Verse 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit. To bring forth fruit means you're willing to put in the work. To bring forth fruit, fruit means you're actually committed to the, to the mission. That means you're going out there and you're getting the fruit and you're showing the fruit of your labor. You understand that? So that means you have to get off of your butt. Read on. And that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. That means you're going to prosper in his ways. You're going to be prosperous in his truth. So from there, get me um, Ecclesiastes chapter uh, 12 and verse 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. So we got to make sure that, that we're doing the things that we're called to do. Because this class is, is you know, it, it's, it's, it's dedicated to the men. Because a lot of times men come into this truth and they lack the understanding of what they're really called for. They lack the they lack the uh the the durability to endure the fight. A lot of them don't even want to get out of their seat and put in the work. So you know what that says? Eventually you're gonna fall out. Eventually someone's gonna pull you out of the way. Read that. Ecclesiastes 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. Read. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Read. For this is the whole duty of man. This is the whole what? Duty of man. So unto the men he's calling, and it says our duty is to uh, keep the commandments. Our duty is to do as our commander and chief has told us. Our duty is to respect and honor the men that, that, that Christ set up over us. That's our duty. Our duty is to hit the street and wake up our nation to bring in the fruit. All right, read on. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So it says, for God shall bring every work so the work that you put in this in in this fight it will be brought into judgment cuz a lot of y'all y'all act like y'all here y'all only show up on the sabbath y'all only show up for the new moon part time y'all only show up for the feast part time but when it comes down to MOV camp 101 you're nowhere to be seen you're nowhere to be seen you know why because you're not committed to the mission and it says every it says uh, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So whether you're doing good, it's going to be brought into judgment. And whether it be evil, it's going to be brought into judgment. From there, give me um, Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 10. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 10. And I don't know about y'all, man. I want to be a fat boy on this scale when it comes to my works. I want my, my works to outweigh all the, all the, the wrong I've done because everyone's sinned. But you want to make sure that you put in the work and you're doing the things to make sure that you outshine those sins, that you overcome those sins. All right. Read on. Ezekiel chapter three and verse 10. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, 
all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart and hear with thine ears. So it said, it said, uh, and hold on, let me let me go right back to it real quick. Uh, boom, 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 and Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy thirty two. No, yeah, stay where you at, officer. Stay where you at. I just want to touch on one thing real quick. All right, Deuteronomy thirty two and seven. It says, "Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations." So if we're considering the days of old, what did Ezekiel say? Read that again, Ezekiel 3. Moreover, verse 10, he said unto me, son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart. So he said, receive his words in your heart. This is what this is what our our, our savior, our commander is commanding our forefather and commanding us today. Read on. And hear with thine ears. Read. And go, get thee to them of the captivity. And do what? Get thee to them of the captivity. Aren't we the ones in captivity? Aren't we the ones that have to that have to go out there and get our people? We know the truth. We know who we are. We know we're Israel. We know that God called us in here for a purpose. So why, why should I waste my years sitting on the sidelines? Wow, there's all my brothers and sisters, thousands, millions upon brothers and sisters who desire, uh, uh, who desire the word of God, who are, who, are in, who are in deep sleep, who are desiring to be woken out of the sleep. You understand that? We have a big responsibility as the men being called into this truth. Read on. Unto the children of thy people. The children of thy people, that's Israel, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, read. And speak unto them, and tell them, thus saith the Lord God, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. So it doesn't matter if they're going to listen or if they don't listen. We're still commanded to go to them. We're still commanded to comfort our people. How can you comfort your people if all you're doing is punching a clock nine to five for Esau, going to school for Esau, but when it comes to putting in work for your nation, you ain't doing nothing. You just sitting there on your lazy black butt. That that that's not answering the call. That's that's playing that's the Christian church. That's playing Sunday, uh playing playing church as they say. That's what you're doing right now. From there, give me um Second Timothy uh three. Second Timothy two and three. The book of Second Timothy, chapter two and verse three. Second Timothy, chapter two and verse three. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So when you come in this truth, there's going to be hardness. You already deal with hardness in the world. Why not deal with hardness in the truth? Why not deal with the hardness of being called? Why not deal with it there? You deal with hardness every day of your life. Nine to five, uh, hatred, last hire, first fire. Being oppressed in these streets, police in your neighborhoods, but you still won't get off your lazy butt and be go through the hardness for God, go through the hardness for Christ, go through the hardness for your nation. You don't want to endure that hardness, but you want to come in here and play church, though. Read on. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Read verse three again. Read verse three again. Verse three. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So it says a good soldier. A good soldier means you're disciplined, meaning you're committed to the mission. That's a good soldier. You call by the black Messiah. You call by him, the greatest man to ever walk the face of the earth. The man who's coming back to redeem us. You are called by him to be a soldier in his army. This ain't Esau army. This is God's army. You're called into it. But some of y'all refuse to pick up the phone. Read that. Verse four. Verse four. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. So we're at war. We are at war. Right now, IUIC is at the front line of the war. You understand that? We're the ones going overseas, putting in our bricks. We're the ones traveling to different cities to wake up our people. We're the ones committed to the corner nine to, uh, nine to five if we have to. This is our this is our this is our job. This is our job. We're about our father's business. This isn't a hobby. This is our way of life. But a lot of people don't see it as their way of life. They see it as something that's kind of like a, a a phase that they're going through. But it says that no man at war entangled himself with the affairs of this life. The affairs of this life is the political system. Birthdays, Easter, Christmas, those are the affairs of this life. The fancy things. 
Don't don't get yourself wrapped up in all that. You get you better get yourself wrapped up in this Bible. That's what you need to get yourself wrapped up in. Read on. Verse five. And if a man also strive from masteries. No, read, read the uh, in the verse four. Verse four. That he may. That he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. That we may please Christ. It tells you in verse three who chose us. We read in um, John 15 that it was Christ that chose us. He recruited us to be in his army. So how dare you sit in your chair and how dare you sit on the sideline while your brothers go to war? You should that it should it should hurt you. You should you should feel bad. When I see the marches, I man, man, it, it moves me. If you're not moved by when you see a march or when you see our bishop come back on Passover, if that stuff doesn't move you, then I don't know what will. Cause obviously the words in this book ain't moving you, and you got physical examples, you still ain't moved. You a waste of time, damn near. But you got to have that desire in your heart. You got to have that love for your nation. But it starts with you because you got to examine yourself to see if you in the faith, to see if you in this truth. All right. From there, um, give me Judges chapter three. Judges chapter three. Because you got to remember, if we call to be soldiers and we're at war, you also got to consider. Do we serve a God that's about war? It's our father about war. Exodus 15 and 3 tell you who our father is, what he's about. He's a man of war. You don't think he want his children to be men of war? Let's see. Get that in Judges. Judges chapter 3 and verse 1. Now these are the nations which the Lord left to prove Israel by them, even as many of Israel as had not known all the wars of Canaan. That didn't know what? All the wars of Canaan. The wars that didn't know the wars. Because he wanted to prove us. And we're going to find out if this proof is just physical. Read on. Only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war. To teach us how to war. Read. At the least such as before knew nothing thereof. Now jump to verse 4. Verse 4. And they were to prove Israel by them. So it's to prove us by these wars. Let's find out how the Lord was proving us by these wars. Read on. To know whether they would hearken unto the commandments of the Lord, which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. So if it's to prove us by the commandments, that means it's not all physical. That means there's a spiritual aspect behind it. That means... When we go into these nations, these nations might be worshiping other gods. These nations might be keeping Christmas. These nations might be keeping um, Thanksgiving. Hmm. Hmm. It's something if you come into the truth and you're sitting in a chair and you still following the ways of the nation. You're still lighting the blunt every other weekend. Hmm. Hmm. These are things to think about. The, the Lord's proving you. And you know what? Read that again. I, I just like the way that sounds. Read it one more time. Verse 4. And they were to prove Israel by them, to know whether they would hearken unto the commandments of the Lord, which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. So he wanted to see if we're going to hearken to him. So that's what the Lord, the Lord, the Lord knew what he was doing because he know all of y'all in this walk ain't for him. He know all of y'all ain't really about this walk. Y'all not answering the call of duty. Y'all answered the call, but y'all not doing the work behind the call. Y'all not doing the duty required of a good soldier. From there, give me Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. And read verse 12. Ephesians 6 and 12. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So that's what we're warring against. We're warring against spiritual. We're warring against the wickedness in high places, the principalities. That's your governments. That's your that's the your nobles. That's the that's that's the American political system. That's the system all around the world. That's set up against the 12 tribes of Israel to keep you blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans still thinking you're blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans. That's that's what we warn against. We're warned against their holidays, against their politics, against Christianity, 
against white Jesus, who is not Jesus, the imposter. These are who we warn against. We're here to release our people out of the captivity. And part of that captivity is their minds have to be disconnected from the ways that, that of this society. That's what we have to do. From there, jump up to verse 10. Verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Some of y'all like, in the power of his might, his might, his might. Every Sabbath you do it, but you ain't doing nothing behind the power and the might. You're not committed to the power and the might. How can you say in his power and his might and you're not doing the things showing forth the power and the might? You're a hypocrite. Read on. Put on the whole armor of God. Now you have to put on a whole armor of God, which is the commandments. Read. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You have to fight back. From there, get me um, Psalms chapter 83. Psalms 83, verse 1. Psalms chapter 83 and verse 1. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. You know, you know how God is not going to keep his silence? God is not coming down right now. Christ is not coming down. He's going to do it with those men that he sends out to go get his people. That's why it says wisdom cried out in Proverbs 8. Because these men are going to go out there and be tired of everything that we see. Read on. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. And that's they, a, that, a tumult is a, a large, angry gathering. Read. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. So it says, they that hate thee have lifted up the head. In order for them to lift up their head, that means they're looking. That means they're paying attention to everything going on. When you lift up your head, you see everything in front of you. If your head down, you can't see anything. Right now, Israel's head's down. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we're the ones with our heads down. But God says our, the nations, their heads are up. They are looking. They're watching everything we do. That's why you got Instagram. You got social, all these social media platforms. Why do you think they could, uh, uh, off of social media, they could pin a case on a brother and throw him in prison for 25 years? Because their head is up. They're finding all these different avenues to make sure that they see everything you're doing in your house, out your house, on your phone, whatever it might be. Read on. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. No no, the, the crafty council goes right back to that social media by changing your your heritage, your nationality, by taking you away from your God, by putting you in a Christian church. All this is crafty council. Their school system, all this is crafty council. Read on. And consulted against thy hidden ones. Where the hidden ones? Read on. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. We're the ones cut off from being a nation. We are the ones cut off from being who we are. That's why you don't have a chair at the United Nations, because you're cut off. You're not a nation. But we're here today to tell you, if you believe and you answer the call of duty, then you know you truly are a nation. You do have a heritage. It didn't start in the 1960s with the Black Power movement. Movement. It didn't start with, uh, with Nat Turner and the uprising during the time of slavery. It didn't start with that. It didn't start with the civil rights movement, with Martin Luther King. No, no. It started with your, your, your heritage started in the book of Genesis with the first man, Adam. That's when your heritage started. Your heritage started from then, and it's going to last forever. Read on. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Read. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. That's them lifting up their head. They're all confederate. They're all watching us. They all came together for one reason, to destroy the 12 tribes of Israel. And I don't blame them. I'm going to be real. I don't blame them. Because look, who would want to be subject to, to, to another nation? Who would want that? Everybody want to be on top, right? Everybody. You should want to be on top, too. So that means you should answer the call of duty and get your butt up because you're tired of being at the bottom. You're tired of being the tail. Read on. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarenes. So there you go. The, the, I just wanted to hit a Edom. 
the so-called white man, the devil, Esau, Idumia, the Greek, he is the one, the main one at the top of God's hit list because he's the one with the most hatred for his people. He's the one who, who, who seeks to destroy us. Then it tells you the Arabs. Then it goes into the Africans. Then it goes into Moab. These nations hate us. And if you read on, there's a whole list. But um, for time's sake, give me um, 2 Corinthians 10 and 3. 2 Corinthians 10 and 3. So, so if y'all if y'all don't know y'all hate it, man, I hope this class uh, get, gets you inspired to want to get up and fight back against these nations. Read that. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. I, 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 this had to be, be read because some of y'all crazy as hell. Y'all going to hear fight back and y'all going to say, ah, it's time to go to war. You better sit your black butt down because check this out. If, if you got a gun, they got an armory. If you got an armory, they got missiles and bazookas. Hey, the Arabs walk around um uh, uh the, the so-called Middle East with them bazookas on their back. You ain't going, man. You who, come on, man. You ain't fighting that. Negroes just got little hand pieces and a little a little machine gun. Esau got lasers, missiles. He'll decimate a whole community if he got to to get rid of one black man. You understand that? Read on. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The strongholds that are on our people's mind. We are, we, that's what, that's why when you wear your fringes in your border of blue, the nations are in fear. This is why when they see us on a corner prophesying, they can't help but stop and look. Because they see us and they're, they're like, oh damn, time's ticking. Uh-oh, uh-oh, my time's running short. That's what Levi like to say, uh-oh. Hey, your time getting short. All right, read on. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Like I said, we are sent to, well, actually, I'm not going to say as I said, as the Bible said. Our people are in captivity. We are sent to our people who are in captivity. And it says to, and here it says, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Oh, oh, so we're supposed to go take them out of captivity and bring them into bondage under God, under their heritage. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to cast down the imagination that they're black, that the white man is white, that Jesus Christ is white. That that the day that the Lord's day is Sunday. No, 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 no. And it's funny when you ask a, a Christian if they if they believe in the Ten Commandments, they're like, Lord have mercy. Yes, I do. Sweet Jesus. How dare you ask me that? Well, what about the fourth commandment? The fourth commandment. What that say? Thou shalt not steal. They don't even know the fourth commandment. Then you read it to them and they're like, huh, let me count. Uh, the week start on Monday now. Nah, the week start on Sunday. And then when we show them out of the scriptures, some of them in astonishment. We just met a brother last night. We had to show him that. And he couldn't help but eat his words. And when I say last night, that means, hey, guess what? There's men that was fighting last night. Just like there's men fighting right now. Answering the call of duty. Read on. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience. So when, wait, wait, wait. So we we are the avengers. We are here to revenge all disobedience. Read on. When your obedience is fulfilled, when you fulfill your calling, when you fulfill who you are, who you were called to be. Guess what? You fulfill your your obedience in Christ. From there, give me uh, what do I want? Give me uh, Ecclesiastes ten eighteen. Get Ecclesiastes 10, 18. All right. Because we at war. It's a spiritual war and we got to make sure that we ready for the battle. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 18. By much slothfulness, the building decayeth. So it says by much slothfulness. When you're not being obedient to what you were called to duty to do, you are being slothful. And it says, read that again. By much slothfulness, the building decayeth. 
You want to see the building decay. You want to see the nation, the temple of God decay. That's what you want to see. When you're slothful, that's what you're basically saying, that you want to see all the, the, the work that's been put in to decay. Because you know what happens sometimes? That spirit you have jumps on the brother next to you. Oh, he don't do nothing. That's why it's imperative if you are a soldier, officer, captain, whatever you are in this truth that you put in work. Because guess what? What we do is seen by all the men down there in the black shirts. How we move is seen by the black shirts. It's seen by the brothers that just coming into this wall. Oh, he don't care. Why should I care? That's why it's important. Even once you enter the call of duty, you make sure that the house does not decay. Read on. And through idleness of the hands, the house droppeth through. There's always something to be done. I don't care if you're in a black shirt. Once you prove yourself worthy, you pass the six months, you start going to Camp 101, MOV, that's when you say, you know what, maybe I can join the video editing team. Maybe I can make thumbnails. Maybe I could do this. Maybe I could do that. There's too much work to be done. There's too many people to reach. And you know what that shows? That shows that you're making your calling an election sure. From there, get me um, a fee. Uh, no, nah, not a fee. Give me Luke 21. Luke 21. Luke 21 and verse 15. Luke chapter 21 and verse 15. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. So once you commit and you get off your butt and you stop being slothful and you actually get into the war, God says he's giving you a mouth that no one can resist. That's why your mama and your daddy mad. That's why your auntie and your cousin mad. That's why your, your wife mad. That's why your sister mad. Your friends who are not associates are mad. Because you have a mouth that cannot be resisted. So you know what they do? They stop calling. They don't want to talk to you no more. They don't want to hang with you anymore. You're no longer that cool cousin, that cool family member. You're not that guy anymore. Read on. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolks and friends. So that means you're going to be betrayed. When you come into this walk, it's a guarantee you're going to be betrayed. It's a guarantee. They're going to talk behind your back. They're going to they're gonna clown you. Look at him with the little fling flings. That's what they're going to say when they see you. You're going to be odd. Now you're peculiar. But that's a good thing. Because now you're an Israelite. You're no longer a, a, a Negro. You're no longer a Hispanic. You're no longer nigga Bob on the corner smoking and drinking. You are now something valuable to the most high God and a soldier in Jesus Christ's army. So now you're actually worth something. Read on. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. Oh, don't get scared now. Don't get scared now. It is fearful to know that you might get put to death. But with that, you know that if you get put to death, there's a reward waiting for you. You know if you give your life for the most high God and for this walk, there's something waiting for you greater than this. Because our flesh is going to perish anyway. So it might as well be for God. He made us. He brought us in the world. He put the spirit in us. So why not die for God? Why not put your life on the line for, for, for something more than you? That's one thing I can say about the nations. They're willing to put their life on the line for something bigger than themselves. They're willing to do what it takes in order to make sure that they bring forth the nation. They bring forth their nation. Why can't we do that? Read on. And he shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. So when you hate it, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. It's actually a good thing that you hate it. That means you're doing something right. Read on. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. But a not a hair on your head shall perish. You know why? Because you're going to get the kingdom. You're going to get that eternal life. God is with you. The angels are with you. You are not alone. You might think you're alone, but you are not alone. The, the, our forefather um, Elijah thought he was alone But he was not alone He might have been alone at that, that very moment But he had, he had thousands of men 
doing the work just like he was doing. He was not alone. From there, get me. Uh, that's it on that. Yes, sir. All right. From there, get me First Timothy four and ten. First Timothy four and ten. First Timothy chapter four and verse ten. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Read it again. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God. So we're going to suffer hatred. Why? Because we trust in God. We're going to suffer these things. So you can't be fearful when the, when the reproach comes on you. You can't be fearful when these things come upon you. You can't be slothful because you're worried about who you're going to offend. Who cares if you offend those people in the world? Read on. Who is the savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Especially for those that believe. How do we show we believe? Believe is another word for faith. How do we show it? By putting forth the work, by answering the call and doing the duty required of a good soldier in God's army. That's the only way that you're going to show that you're a faithful servant of God. But if you forever sitting in a chair and not getting up, putting it in your brick, how are you showing yourself faithful? You think you're faithful just because you come to a, a Sabbath? That's part of it, but it's more to it. There's more to it. Especially if you consider yourself a soldier, especially if you consider yourself a man. You set your you set your house in order. You show that you know how to take care of your house, how to get your stuff in order. And then you go put in the work for the nation. It's nation building time, as they say, as IUIC say, as leadership says, it's nation building time. So what are you going to do? There more on that? No, sir. Give me um, Deuteronomy 3 and 22. Deuteronomy 3 and 22 for, for, for those that are in fear For those that might not be doing what they're supposed to do Because they're in a little bit of fear Deuteronomy 3 and verse 22 Read De Deuteronomy chapter 3 and verse 22 uh -huh. You shall not fear them For the Lord your God He shall fight for you Our Lord God will fight for us We shall not fear them Meaning you're not fearful of your wife you're not fearful of, of your, your, your friends. You're not fearful of your family. You're not fearful of the nations. Because in order for you to go on a corner, you can't have fear. You can have a level of fear where, where it causes wisdom to kick in. But you can't be fearful to the point that you're scared to go wake up your nation. You can't have that fear. Like I said before, the nations aren't scared to go do the things they have to do to make sure their nation's okay. They're not scared to go against the whole you China went against the whole United States of America and, and, and said that they would not take any more flights and this, that, and the third. Why? Because one of their one one of the, the members of their family, what I which I consider the nation, their family, said, you know what? My family member was beat up on an airplane and disrespected. You know what? We are no longer gonna support America. That's how the nations think. That's nation building. That's loving your neighbor as you love yourself. But you don't even love your neighbor as you love yourself if you're not even willing to get out there and fight. Ain't no love there. That's that you, you letting the building decay. Because guess what? Every person on the corner, that is the temple of God. We read it. 1 Corinthians 3. We read it that they're the temple of God, but you rather watch them be destroyed because you're not willing to go out there and try to wake up the lost sheep of Israel. That's why a lot of y'all get moved out the way. And guess what? Someone else gets re replaces you. Read on. And That's I, it on that? Yes, sir. Read it again. Verse 22. Ye shall not fear them, for the Lord your God, he shall fight for you. God will fight for us. From there, give me um, Psalms 56 and 3. Psalms 56 and verse 3. The book of Psalms, chapter 56 and verse 3. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. So when you are afraid, because like I said, everybody has a sense of fear when you're in certain situations. If someone's surrounding the camp with guns, you have a sense of fear. If someone comes up to us and they're ready to stab one of our brothers, there's a sense of fear. But guess what? We, it, it has to kick in that God is with us. We have to trust in God that he's going to carry us through. But how do we trust in God? We use the wisdom that he has given us in his book. This is this is how we this is how we trust in God. We use the wisdom. 
Because God has an answer for everything. How do you protect your brother? How do you love your neighbor? By using the wisdom that God has given you. How do you war? Using the wisdom that God has given you. Because guess what? This is sharper than any two-edged sword. I choose this. I choose this over weapons. Because like I told you before, the, we the weapons, hey, Esau could take it away from you, throw you in prison. You ain't got nothing then. All you got is God. All we got is this Bible. Um, From there, uh, give me, d -d 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 -d, let me see. Read it again. Read it again. Verse 3. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. All right. So we have to trust in God. So trusting in God is not being idle. Trusting in God is not being idle. From there, give me Sirach chapter 26 and verse 28. Sirach 26 and verse 28. Sirach chapter 26 and verse 28. There be two things that grieve my heart, and the third maketh me angry. A man of war that suffereth poverty. Wait, 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 wait. It says a man of war that suffereth poverty. Meaning if you war for God, he is not, he is not going to let you go unpaid. He's not America. He said, read that again. There be two things that grieve my heart, and the third maketh me angry. A man of war that suffereth poverty. So we are not going to suffer poverty if we put in the work for God. God is going to repay us double, triple fold. But all we got to do is get out there and do the work. Answer the call of duty. Read on. And men of understanding that are not set by. And men of understa understanding that are not set by. Meaning, you, we got all this leadership. The leaders. That's why I started off with Deuteronomy 32. Because we got leaders that we're supposed to sit by. They have the understanding. These are the men that we're supposed to go to. But read it again from the top. Verse 28. There be two things that grieve my heart. And the third maketh me angry. A man of war that suffereth poverty. So you're not, again, you are not going to suffer poverty poverty you're going to be taken care of no matter what if it's not this life it'll be in the next when you when you brought up from the dead when the kingdom is ours you're not going to suffer poverty you're going to be you're going to be the rich man you're going to be the one with the with your foot to the nation's neck you're going to have servants i don't know what's up with y'all man it, it, why even be in the war God is not that. We don't serve a God that's not going to repay us. We serve a God that's going to take care of us, that's going to take care of his people. But we have to trust in that. And then we got to go do the work to make sure our people understand that God is their God, that Jesus Christ is not a white man. You understand? From there, give me uh, 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, matter of fact, 2nd Ezra 7. 2nd Ezra 7. Got a couple more scriptures. 2nd Ezra 7. Second Ezra 7 and verse 57. Second Ezra chapter 7 and verse 57. Read. Then answered he me and said, This is the condition of the battle, which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. So there's a condition to the battle. What's the condition of the battle? That you're going to have to suffer losses. You're going to have to go through trials. That you're going to have to war for your people. If you're in a battle, that means you're fighting. That means you're a soldier. Read on. That if he be overcome, he shall suffer as thou hast said. But if he get the victory. But he, if you get the victory. Read. He shall receive the thing that I say. So you're going to receive the things that he has said. But you know what um, the issue is? Some of y'all don't believe that. You know what y'all believe? Y'all let your wife have her foot in y'all neck. Y'all let your wife tell y'all what to do. That's the reason why some men not even in the fight. Because of their wives. Hey, pull up that video. Because there's some of these brothers in the truth. They 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 leave out of here and they go home and they they're this brother. You you got the video? Pull that up. This y'all. This this is y'all when y'all go home. Play that. Your wife walking. She walking you through the house. See that? That's that's nonsense. Take that off the screen. I don't want to see it no more. She disgusts me. 
Uh, and he disgusts me even more. Um, but yeah, that's that's some of y'all. Y'all wife come home, the kids say, Bishop on deck. Everybody stand up and salute her. <laughs> the hell is this, man? Hey, man, y'all, some of y'all gotta get 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 your get your cojones back, man. Cause some of y'all are 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 are, are weak. Y'all simps. Y'all letting your wife rule you. You in this walk for 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 X amount of years, and you still in the same spot because your wife. Because you don't want to disappoint your wife. Guess what? If she's disappointed, she better fall in line or get the hell out. I'm telling you right now, if your wife is the reason why you're not in a fight, you are not getting the kingdom. You turned your wife into an idol. That's what you did. You turned her into an idol and a hey, and God and Christ is not playing with you. Christ is not going to play with you milly willy boys. So y'all better get y'all manhood back and stand up manfully for God and fight for your nation. Read that in 1 Corinthians 13 and 11. First Matter of fact, wait, wait, wait. Before you get 1 Corinthians 13 and 11, I, I, I want to pull this one. Uh, numbers uh, 32 and 7. Numbers 32 and 7. Read that real quick. Because this is, this is y'all brothers sitting on the sideline. The, the brothers who, who want to sit at home comfortably, legs kicked up with the wife, whatever it might be. Brothers that don't want to pull out, put in the work, only show up for fun days. This y'all, read that. Numbers chapter 32 and verse 7. And wherefore discourage ye the heart of the children of Israel. That's what y'all do when y'all come in here. Y'all sit in these chairs for a year and discourage the heart of the men. The men that was called to put in the duty. Read. From going over into the land which the Lord hath given them? Oh, the land that the Lord has given us? Don't we fight to get our land back? Isn't that what this is all about? Isn't that what we're called for? To bring into captivity those that are captive? Those, that's what we called for. To wake up the 12 tribes of Israel. Read on. Thus did your fathers when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to see the land. So we are called when we sit by and watch while our other brothers go take the land, our other brothers go out there and fight on the corners of Babylon day in, day out. And you still sitting by watching the war, watching them brothers come into the to the Sabbath. See the men come back from war, sweaty, musty, some of them. And you just sitting there smelling good, smelling like uh, smelling like your wife. <laughs> Lips all bum bum up. You know what I'm saying? What the hell's going on? What's up with y'all brothers, man? Get off your butt. It's sad when you got brothers with 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 uh with disabilities. You got you got kids, young young men showing up to camp 101, but you got able, willing men that won't show up. Not once. That's a problem. That is a damn problem. Now get that in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. So I when you come in, you're a child. Some of y'all are still children because it says the commandments are what make you men. And part of that commandment is for us to go get the fruit. So when you're a child, okay, we understand. You just came in. Give you some time. Read. I understood as a child. Okay. I thought as a child. Okay. But when I became a man, uh -huh. I put away childish things. When you became a man, you did what? Put away childish things. When you become a man, you put away the childish things. Like pleasing your wife. Like not putting in the bricks because you want to play video games all day. Not putting in the bricks because you want to sit on your butt and watch Netflix and go through Instagram. No, 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 no. You thought as a child, but now it's time for you to man up. It's time for you to step up and fight the good fight. From that, that's it on that. Yes, sir. From there, give me um Luke seventeen, last scripture. Luke seventeen and verse ten. Sorry about that. Luke, Luke chapter Luke chapter seventeen and verse ten. Read. So likewise, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say. We are unprofitable servants. So when everything's said and done, you're supposed to say we are unprofitable servants. After you did all the work, after you went out there and did everything, once you even get in the chair of leadership, you're supposed to say I am an unprofitable servant. That's what you're going to say. Because, the, look, we, we are nothing. We are nothing without God. 
We are nothing without Christ. And we are nothing without our heritage. So you have to want to war for your people. Hey, hey, one more scripture. One more scripture. Sirach 32 and 17. Sirach 32, 17. I'm going to end it with this one. Sirach 32, 17. The book of Sirach, chapter 32 and verse 17. A sinful man will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse according to his will. Hey, I pray that that, that ain't y'all brothers, but I'm sure it is. Because y'all find excuses for everything. Hey, bro, why you ain't go to Camp 101? Oh, I see what happened was, oh, yeah. Hey, what, hey bro, why, what, what happened to you on the feast day? Oh, man, see what happened was, hey, bro, how long you been in the truth? Man, see, see the the problem is, is, is it fall on this day of the week at this time. This is the reason why I didn't go. Wait, but we got it, what, three days? It's MOV three days, right, officer? Two days? You, well, two days, and the third I'll call Camp 101. So it's two days, and you got Camp 101. So you got all these opportunities to try to put in work. But every opportunity, you got an excuse for. Every chance you got to put in your brick, you got an excuse for. Meaning you don't give a damn about your calling. You don't give a damn about the duties and the requirements of being a good soldier of Christ. You could care less. You know what you care about? Sitting at home, watching Netflix, maintaining the state of the world, watching the building decay. That's what you care about. Read that one more time. Verse 17. A sinful man will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse according to his will. So y'all are in sin. If you don't want to put in the work and you sit in there and you making excuses for why you're not putting in work, you are in sin and you have not answered your calling. Because many are called, but few are chosen. And you don't want to be the one that is not chosen, especially after reading this book. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth. <laughs>